Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Stokes, and welcome to the channel. I've been in clinical practice for 18 years. I own Advanced Pain Solutions in Cape Coral, Florida. I treat chronic illness, and I don't use prescription medications or invasive procedures. Most of my approach is based on natural therapies, uh, whole food supplementation, and herbs. So if you're interested in that, then please subscribe to the channel. And also make sure you download uh, my books. You can get them for free on my website, www.drstephenstokes.com. Today, we're going to talk about inflammation. Uh, inflammation is the beginning of healing. Yet, just about every disease that is killing us has to do with chronic inflammation. So it's a paradox, right? There has to be a balance to inflammation. And if you understand the mechanism of inflammation, which I'm going to explain to you in the next five minutes, then you'll be able to see if any of those um, steps in your own case are being mismanaged or left out. And if they are, then you can resolve chronic inflammation, reduce pain, and influence healing. It's very important. And the answers are so simple that they're often overlooked. So again, inflammation is the basis of most of the diseases that we're, we're having problems with these days. Um, Alzheimer's, stroke, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, arthrosclerosis. These are all inflammatory conditions or conditions that have their basis in chronic inflammation. Now, let's go through the mechanism of what inflammation is and how it happens in the body just briefly. So if you injure a part of your body, say your finger or something like that, the first thing that happens is, is we have these mast cells that let off histamine. Histamine is a chemical that's going to alert the body that there is an injury. Okay. And what that's going to do is it's going to begin a process where you're going to um, release cytokines and prostaglandins and these are chemicals that are going to produce pain. And they're also going to cause um, the cell lining in the injured area to be porous and fluids to come into the injury. So the injury is going to swell. So back with our finger, all of a sudden our finger is going to start hurting a lot. <laughs> and it's going to start swelling, right? It's going to become big and red, inflamed. And that's the first stage of that process. Now, that... Uh, histamine also alerts the first line of attack on that injury, which is going to be uh, white blood cells known as neutrophils. Now, these guys are vicious killers. <laughs> neutrophils are released into the system. They go to the injury site and they basically destroy everything in sight. They destroy good tissue. They destroy bad tissue. I always picture them like, like, like assassins that come in with flamethrowers and they just attack everything, okay? And this is important because if, for example, there's an infection or something like that, you definitely want to kill the infection. You want to kill the bacteria or whatever's, whatever's at the root of that. So the neutrophils do that. They go in, they destroy everything, but they also destroy healthy tissue, okay? So this is a problem. It's a problem if it lasts long term. The good news is, is these neutrophils only last about 48 hours, about two days, okay? As we move into the third day, the body begins releasing some other chemicals that soothe and help to heal the area. These are called things, these have names like um, protectins, resolvins, okay? And these are the chemicals that are going to stop the neutrophils from doing the damage. And they're also going to alert another type of white blood cell called a monocyte, which we'll talk about in a minute. So these chemicals that stop the neutrophils from attacking, these resolvins and protectins, here's the key. They're made from omega-3 fatty acids, okay? If you don't release those chemicals, those neutrophils don't stop the attack. They just keep on going. And the monocytes don't get alerted either. And that creates a chronic cycle of inflammation. So right away we see the value of omega-3 fatty acids. And considering that 80% of the population are deficient in omega-3 fatty acids, making sure that you have enough of these omega-3s in your system is critical if you're going to overcome this inflammatory cycle. 
There is something called the uh, Omega Index Test that you can do on your own in your house. It costs about $50. You take some blood from your finger, you put it on a piece of paper, and you send it to the lab, and they'll tell you if you're deficient in omega-3 fatty acids. And if you're suffering from chronic pain or any of those aforementioned conditions, like heart disease, right, or anything like that that's inflammatory-based, like diabetes, please make sure that you reach out. I'll give you the information. Get yourself an omega index test. Because if you're deficient in these omega-3s, you're not going to stop those neutrophils from going in there and attacking. You're going to get into this chronic cycle of inflammation. Now, assuming you release those uh, protectins and resolvins, then what happens is, is these monocytes, they get alerted. The monocytes are floating around in your, in your system. They're just passive little cells. But when they get alerted from the um, protectins and resolvins, they transform from these beautiful little passive cells into these monstrous Pac-Men, just like the game Pac-Men. Big, they become larger, and they become aggressive, and they travel to the injury site and they do two things. One is they scrub the area clean. So they scrub all the debris from the injury. And secondly, is they gobble up the neutrophils. They literally ingest the neutrophils. And when they do, they blow up and become too big to continue to travel in the blood system. So then they have to travel in the lymph system. So these big, these monocytes that have transformed into these bigger cells called macrophages, they go and hitch a ride in the lymphatic system and that takes them out of the body gets rid of all the crap. But the lymphatic system has to be healthy for that. We'll get into that in a minute too. Most people don't even know what the lymphatic system is. And it's such an important system. It's a whole circulatory system in your body that's very similar to your blood system, but it runs through different channels. And um, it's essential that you have that lymphatic system working properly if you're suffering from chronic pain or chronic inflammation. And I'm going to address that at the end of this talk about how we can get that healthier. So, Back to what's happening here. So these macrophages are down there. They gobble up the, uh, the neutrophils, right? Gobble them up, and they hitch a ride back in the lymphatic system. They also release cytokines and some other chemicals that alert another cell that's found in the fascia called fibroblasts. And this is important. They alert the fibroblasts, hey, the area is now ready for you to come in and do the repair work. And the fibroblasts go in there, and they work with the damaged tissue, and they remold it, and they heal it. And over a period of 12 months, think about that. That's 12 months, the fibroblasts heal the tissue. And if you're lucky, everything heals fine, and there's no large amount of scar tissue, and everything is perfect. But there's a few things that can go wrong. If you remember, we talked about the omega-3 fatty acids being the primary chemical that is going to help the body release those protectins and resolvins that are going to signal the big macrophages to come down and do their job and stop the neutrophils from killing everything. Well, if that fails, the macrophages come late to the show, the neutrophils do their job of killing everything, then the neutrophils die, and if those macrophages haven't arrived on the scene properly, those neutrophils become zombies. <laughs> it's called secondary necrosis. But what it means is, is those neutrophils that are dead, they rise up from the dead and they begin attacking everything again. And this continues in a cycle. Finally, the macrophages come in, but they're all confused because they haven't been alerted properly. They don't know if they're supposed to scrub the area clean or if they're supposed to gobble up the neutrophils, or if they're supposed to alert the fibroblasts to do the healing. And so they do a little bit of everything, but nothing good. And what happens is, is your body gets caught in this endless cycle of inflammation where you're in a constant process of destroying tissue and trying to rebuild new tissue. Everybody shows up at the same time. Everybody's confused. It's a mess. And this is the process of why most people have chronic pain and inflammation. This is what's going on. Um, it's brutal, right, when you have this because it's confusing. Your body's confused. Your immune system's confused. And by the way, those fibroblasts from the fascia, 
Instead of them coming in then and spending their 12 months laying down nice, clean, healthy, new tissue repairing, what do you suppose the fibroblasts do? They create scar tissue. And this is how we get all of this ugly, inflexible scar tissue. And this scar tissue then creates problems with movement of the fascia, creates problems with circulation in the tissue. And you can see, right, we just get into this major mess. And how could all of this have been prevented? Think. Simply. Omega-3 fatty acids. Guys, it's that simple. If you have adequate supply of omega-3 fatty acids in your system and you get injured, you'll probably resolve the whole thing properly. And if you don't, you can go down any one of these rabbit holes and cause all sorts of trouble. Now, with omega-3 fatty acids, you want to get your uh, supplementation from fish oil, not from flaxseed oil or any other type of oil from fish oil. And the key elements are EPA and DHA. And those are two chemicals found in fish oil that are made in the liver of the fish. So when you take the fish oil, it's already been produced. You take it and you get the EPA DHA right away. All right. It's that simple. And that's what you're going to need in your body. If you take a flaxseed oil or another type of oil, your liver has to try and make the EPA DHA. And most sick people do not have the resources to make EPA DHA. So it never gets done. So don't even take a chance. Just take fish oil. I really like calamari oil from Standard Process. It's made from squid. It's purified. And I like to take a teaspoon up to a tablespoon of that every day. A teaspoon a day usually for me is enough to maintain. Um, but if I'm ill, if I'm sick, if I'm having inflammatory problems, I'll take a tablespoon of that a day. If you don't think you can stomach taking a spoonful of oil... I don't know why. It doesn't taste bad. It tastes kind of lemony. But if you can't do a spoonful of oil, then you can opt for uh, tuna omega, I think it's called, which is made by Standard Process. And these are capsules, right? So there's also capsules of fish oil that you can buy from Standard Process if you don't like the, uh, the oil itself. But I would encourage you, if you're sick already, if you're already screwed up, <laughs> I would encourage you to really get the calamari oil. It works the best. And uh, you definitely want to take that, like I said, and that's going to prevent um, this secondary necrosis from the neutrophils. It's going to prevent them from becoming zombies. It's going to prevent you from this chronic inflammatory cycle. So if we're injured, what do we want to do? What are some takeaways? Number one, if you're injured, rest your body for three days. So if you hurt yourself, do not try to do exercise through it. Do not try to work through it. We know that the first 48 hours are going to be the neutrophils attacking everything, causing pain and inflammation and swelling. So give yourself a break. Take the first two days off of any extreme activity. Drink lots of water, right? Take lots of omega-3 fatty acid supplements and relax. Let the body do its job. The other thing is I mentioned about the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is this fluid system in the body that for whatever reason nobody talks about. It's as important or more important than your blood system, and it helps your body remove toxins, debris, nasties, right? In this case, it's going to help the macrophages get rid of those nasty uh, neutrophils and all the debris from the injury. How you can influence the circulation of the lymphatic system is with a very simple thing, rocking. Now, unless, unless, of course, you're more advanced. If you own a rebounder, a mini trampoline, you can get on a mini trampoline and you can do some very gentle bouncing, right? If you have a, uh, what are they called? A Theragun massager or you have a massager, like I covered massagers in another video, you can use the massager. You can massage here and here and some of the other key points where the lymphat lymphatics tend to con get congested. But if you don't have a massager or a vibrator, you don't have a trampoline, then you can rock. Simple rocking chair, gently rocking back and forth like this for 10 to 15 minutes. This gentle rocking motion assists the lymphatics in cleaning out. So you're going to want to do some rocking over those couple of days to assist the lymph. And one thing you do not want to do is take NSAIDs. Advil, Motrin, right? Aleve. These are non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. 
These will make you feel good temporarily. They will damage the lymphatic system. They will prevent the macrophages from going in and doing cleanup and alerting the fibroblasts to do the repair work. They will assist your body in creating nasty neutrophil zombies. <laughs> this is like the walking dead going on right inside your body, right? Um, don't do it. Plus, they're really bad for your stomach, right? Long, long time ago when I was an idiot and I didn't know much, um, some people argue that uh, that wasn't too long ago, but a long time ago when I didn't know these things, whenever I got hurt, even if I was lifting weights or something and I started to feel a bit sore, I take Advil. And of course, all I did was prevent my body from going through the normal natural inflammatory cycle. I did more damage than good. And over time, Advil will wear away the lining, protective mucus lining of your stomach, create ulcers and all sorts of nasties. So don't take Advil. Take the omega-3 supplementation. And if you absolutely must, because the pain is too high, I strongly recommend taking willow bark. And everybody knows I recommend a product from uh, standard, uh, Meta Herb called uh, Salagesic, which is white willow bark. It works fantastically. It is not going to interfere with your tummy like uh, Advil, and it's not going to screw up your lymphatic system like any other NSAIDs. So you would take a combination of Salagesic, which is willow bark, with omega-3 fatty acids. And by the way, there are multiple studies on PubMed. You can go to pubmed.gov and type it in. Multiple studies on the effects of um, aspirin with omega-3 on pain and inflammation. Now, uh, white willow bark or willow bark is the natural herb that they synthesized aspirin from. So it's a natural herb that responds in the body like aspirin, but it also has all of the important elements that aspirin doesn't have. So it's easier on your system. It relieves pain really well. I'd encourage you to uh, go that route instead of gobbling up Advil all the time. So this is what inflammation is. It's like I said, love-hate relationship. It's very useful to your body. Most people don't understand it. And man, so many problems can be solved by checking your omega index. And if it's off, taking omega-3 fatty acids let your body do what it's meant to do, which is heal, heal. The body can heal itself if it's given the right tools. Don't forget that. Hope you found this uh, interesting. If you have any comments or questions, ask, and ask below. If you want to contact me personally, you can do this through my website. Remember, get a copy of my book for free. And any uh, advice you'd like, um, I'm available. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.